In 3.7, nothing changes about what you've been doing in the previous sections. When I think about what our main ideas are, we've been learning how to prove that two triangles are congruent. The only difference is, is now instead of the triangles being two separate triangles, we're going to have triangles that overlap each other. And so there's going to be a bunch of things that are kind of crossing each other in these examples when you see them. And so that's one of the reasons why I say when triangles overlap, they usually have a shared side or shared angle. Use the bigger triangles. When you start looking at these things, don't use these small triangles. Don't think about, um, what's the word, where you have this angle congruent to this angle. Don't think about the vertical angles here. Look for the bigger triangles. That's what we're going to uh, be looking for. When triangles overlap, they usually have a shared side or a shared angle. We're going to use the bigger triangles, and redrawing them helps to see the congruent parts. Let me show you what I mean. This is number two in your workbook. If you want to open up your workbook, you may do so. When I look at this, I can see two pairs of congruent triangles. And so I want you to start looking at them from the same eyes as uh, as a math teacher. So I see this one and this one and this one. We'll call that the green triangle. Then I see this one and this one and this one. It's supposed to be purple, but when you overlap these two colors, it makes it really dark. Okay. So anyhow, we have the green triangle, we have the purple triangle. If you were to draw those two things out separately, you would have one triangle that looks like this, and you would have another triangle that looks like this. If you were to label the vertices, which means all three, um, the vertex, there's three of them, so vertices, J, K, L, K, L, M, would look like that. in all of the overlapping triangle problems that you have today in 3.7, there will always be either a common side or a common angle. So when I look at this, I see a common side. When you separate it, the letters are exactly the same in both triangles. There is a shared side in both of these triangles. If you know what the shared side's letters are, say those letters out loud. Yes. Wonderful. And now that we know that KL is shared, it says separate and redraw overlapping triangles. We've done that. Label the vertices. We have done that. This is uh, only two of the possible overlapping triangles. We could also do this triangle as well and this triangle as well. But regardless of which ones we pick, there will always be a shared side. And we know that it's congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So keep in mind, that's what you're looking for. Other examples of things that you might uh, see. I'm not sure what number this is. Do you see it in your book anywhere? Number three. Take a look. This is number three. Do not use the little tiny triangles. Do not use the four-sided shape. We're looking for the triangles that overlap. The triangle that I see is this medium-sized one here and this other medium-sized one there. If you want to highlight it, you, want it, you can use a highlighter. If you want to draw them separately we can do that as well so I'm highlighting and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw them separately because that's what my direction said P Q T and V 
V P R. Mr. Udall. Uh, what if I knew, like, you know how there's two triangles that are, um, like those two triangles right there, what if I use those? Those triangles do not overlap each other. We could prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other if we wanted to, but because the direction says redraw the overlapping triangles, we want the two triangles that are on top of one another. We want the ones that share something, either a shared side or a shared angle. And so, if you look, I hope you see an angle that's the same in both of these. What angle is the same? Angle P is the same in both triangles. This angle is not going to be labeled congruent to itself, but it is. And so if you're going to use this as a part of a proof, you would say angle P is congruent to angle P by the reflexive property as well. The reflexive property comes into play with overlapping triangles. Which brings us to my last example. My last example is number four. And number four is in your book. And you hardly ever know how many reasons there's going to be with the proof. But in this case, there'll be about that many. Three. What you should always do is you should take your given and write that as your first statement. So I'm going to start off this proof with QD is congruent to segment UA. And angle QDA is congruent to angle UAD. Because it's given what I like to do after that first given statement is I like to go and say okay I have now stated that QD is congruent to UA and I go over to my drawing and add that in there your textbook authors added that there for you but that doesn't mean the person who wrote your test is going to do that for you and considering I am a math teacher, I know we will not have that in the picture for you when you take your test. You will have to get used to taking the given statement and going to the picture and adding the congruent marks yourself. Don't add anything to the picture until you have it proven in your statements and reasons. Next thing that we have is that QDA, QDA, this angle right here is congruent to angle UAD. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to prove that triangle QDA is congruent to triangle UAD. That's what we're trying to prove. I'm trying to prove, and if you don't know, we could highlight what that is. QDA is this one, QDA, that one. And we're trying to get it to be congruent to UAD, U. A D. This is where those overlapping triangles come into play. If you just look at the light blue or the, the green one, you only have a side and an angle and a side and an angle. You do not have enough information to prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other yet. We need something else. We need something else. I have a side and an angle. Is there something else I haven't written down yet? Two letters. Go ahead and say the two letters out loud if you see them. Yeah. I like it. All of you saw. DA is congruent to what other two letters? Yeah. By which property? Reflexive. Reflexive. Let's get fancy. It's the reflexive property of congruence. There is something called the reflexive property of equality. Uh, that's something that is different when we're not dealing with congruent shapes and sizes. When you're in algebra, we can use the reflexive property of uh, equality, by the way. Now that we have that, we have now proven that DA is congruent to DA. That's our second piece of information. I usually add two congruent marks there. DA is going to be the same in both the light blue triangle and the green triangle. And now I have enough information to prove how the green triangle and the blue triangle are congruent to each other. What are the three letters I'm going to use? Perfect. We're going to end your notes right there.